Welcome back for more physiology. We're going to be continuing our story from yesterday dealing with membrane proteins and protein pumps to making something that we call the resting membrane potential. So what we're going to do for this resting membrane potential is talk about the role of diffusion because diffusion turns out to be a big deal in making a membrane potential. So from yesterday we happen to have the sodium potassium pump and what it does is it utilizes ATP energy to move sodium ions from one side of the membrane to the other side. In particular moves sodium ions from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid. It will also take potassium ions from the extracellular fluid and drag it on in. So it brings it from the outside to the inside. When we do this we result in a concentration gradient. Meaning sodium if allowed to diffuse will diffuse from the outside to the inside and potassium ions if allowed to diffuse will move from the inside to the outside. Something that's missing from this picture, which makes it incomplete, is the fact that for every sodium ion that is out there and every potassium ion that's out there, we turn out to have a positive, or pardon me, we have a negative charge that goes with it because you can't have a charge in isolation. There's always going to be, if there's a positive charge, there must be a negative charge somewhere. If I want things to move around across a membrane, I can either pump them using a membrane protein or I can let them move through some type of other facilitated transport, some other assisted movement using one of these proteins. The way we can do that is we can utilize things that we call channels. A channel is just an open tube and stuff is free to diffuse however it needs to. Or we can use a carrier protein sometimes called a gate. Gates have directions, meaning they will only allow things to flow in a particular manner and they can be opened and they can be closed. What we happen to notice is within cells that can generate or that have the sodium potassium pump is they have this thing called a potassium leak channel and what that potassium leak channel will do is it will allow potassium ions far left side of this picture to move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell because that's its concentration gradient. There's a catch though because I told you that every sodium ion has a negative charge and every potassium ion has an associated negative charge. Every time a potassium ion leaves, there's an unpaired negative charge. And there's a rule that says that opposites attract. It's referred to as Coulomb's law. And the result is the potassium ions are going to become so attracted to what's on the inside of the cell that the potassium ions will no longer leak because the attraction to that negative charge will prevent that potassium ion from leaving. If we look at it mathematically, it looks something like this. So the top one is Coulomb's law. The bottom one is a result of Coulomb's law. It's referred to as the Nernst equation. And the Nernst equation is used to generate something that we call a potential. Potential is the chemical version of being able to do something, being able to do work or at least chemical potential in this case. Voltages are a different phenomenon. But what I get is if due to Coulomb's law preventing that potassium ion from continuing to leak, what I get is a uniform charge built up, under, at least within a region, underneath the cell surface of being negative. And if the inside is negative, that means relatively speaking the outside is positive. At that point that we pause at, meaning where potassium ions are no longer leaking out, we call that the resting membrane potential. And the values vary all over the place. Some of them are negative 70, some of them are negative 40, some of them are negative 90. And the unit turns out to be a millivolt, which is about a 20th of a AA battery. But what we get is each cell in your body, which does this, and all cells do this, it is a potential battery to be used.